Yo, what up, homies? This is Big Bone coming at you from the Bears Earth Kitchen. Today, I'm going to show you how to make carnivore pizza crust. This recipe comes from this dude, Chris Cook in Nashville. Uh, he's got a great YouTube channel where he does all kinds of keto and carnivore and ketovore and low carb and all that. Uh, he, he's got a lot of great recipes, very creative. Like, I've never seen somebody do so much with scrambled eggs. But, um,. Uh, this recipe does not taste like scrambled eggs. This is the best carnivore pizza crust I've ever eaten. Even better than the amazing um, cloud bread one. Uh, so, but this is the best. And you're gonna love it, cause I love it. You might not love it, but whatever. I definitely love it, and that's why I'm making it. So enjoy. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna take a look at what ingredients we gotta use here. First things first, man, we're gonna start off with some of these eggs. We're gonna need seven eggs separated into separate bowls for yolks and whites. We're gonna need one eight ounce block of cream cheese softened up. We're gonna need grated Parmesan and shredded mozzarella, egg white powder, and lastly, unflavored gelatin and butter. All right, so let's go ahead and start with uh, separating our eggs here. So you're going to notice I have this uh, steel mixing bowl in addition to the bowls that I have to separate my eggs in. That's, I'm going to use it for garbage. So if you're ever doing anything that makes garbage while you're in the kitchen, you know, like peeling onions, separating eggs, peeling shrimp, smashing up garlic or any kind of stuff like that, it's good to just bring your garbage to you. You're not trying to like run around back and forth throwing <laughs> in the trash, you know. And, uh, you know, I'd rather have a little garbage on the counter like that than have to walk around having this big <laughs> garbage over by my legs. So, that's what I do. So, the reason we're going to do these eggs first is uh, we're making a, a souffle type batter here. And that <laughs> uh, works best when the eggs are warmer so we're leaving these eggs out to sit at room temperature and speaking of what? being at room temperature i forgot to leave my cream cheese out so now i'm gonna have to soften it up in the microwave so we're just throwing on a microwave safe plate and we're gonna pop it in the microwave just throw that bad boy right in there and uh 15 seconds should do you okay now right here, I'm measuring out a half cup of shredded mozzarella cheese that's going to go in the crust, followed by three tablespoons of Parmesan cheese, four tablespoons of egg white powder, dried egg white powder, separated into two equally sized little ramekins because one ramekin of it is going to go into the yolks and one's going to go into the whites later on. So we need the four tablespoons separated into the two, two tablespoon ramekins. Then we're going to do what essentially amounts to being the same thing with unflavored gelatin. So uh, instead of using tablespoons, we're going to use teaspoons. It's going to be two teaspoons. So they're going to be divided into one teaspoon ramekins. Now we're going to grab a single tablespoon of butter, pop it in this little pan here, and we're going to melt that butter. Go ahead, take a walk over to your stove, and set up a little medium-low flame to melt that butter. And just throw that on there for now, and let it melt. Now while that butter's melting, it's about time we started combining our ingredients. So we're going to grab a, a mixing bowl and we're going to put our egg yolks in there first. We're going to put the cream cheese, the shredded cheese, and the Parmesan cheese in there with one of the gelatin tablespoons. And we're going to start mixing it. As you can see, I stuck this bad boy in the stand mixer, making sure it's secure. And I'm going to start it on low. So it's like a stir because uh, I don't want anything flying around. Like any, if there's like a dry powdery substance in there, if you put it on 
too high, too fast, poof, powder everywhere, all over you, all over everything in the kitchen, all over your goddamn coffee machine, everywhere. So, anyways, get it started, and then turn the speed up, and then once everything's nice and mixed, come on, mix, hurry up, mix, mix, come on. Anyways, once everything is nice and mixed, you're going to add your two tablespoons of egg white powder. And just a heads up, sometimes this powder, it's a little bit of a pain to try to get out of the ramekin, you know? Anyways, you're going to mix that egg white powder in, and you're going to mix it in well. At least that's what the instructions say. They say mix it well. And then after that, you got to add the butter. Look at all that butter going in there. Yeah! Anyway, put the delicious butter in there, and you're going to whip it again. And you're going to try to whip as much air into that mixture as possible. So usually what I'll do is I'll whip it for about five minutes. But I'm not going to show five minutes of whipping here because that would be whack. Alright, it's been five minutes. Shut that bad boy off. And go ahead, take that shit out of there. And clean off your whisk attachment. Get that goddamn bowl right the f*** out of there. And get a new bowl right into place. Lock it in. And you're going to want to put your egg whites. Your other two tablespoons of dried egg white powder. And your second teaspoon of gelatin. Then you're going to put the whisk back on. The whisk that you already cleaned, by the way. And you're going to slowly mix the powder up a little bit. Because, like I said, you don't want it poof everywhere. Then uh, you're going to end up turning it up to high and letting it go for five minutes, which I'm not going to record all of. One, two, three, four, five. Five minutes have gone by. And we now have what we like to refer to as stiff peaks. Uh, stiff peaks is when the egg whites are just like, they don't move. Like, they're just like a big stiff it's like a it's how you make meringue basically too but uh once you get your stiff peaks go wash your whisk off again time to fold some egg whites into some egg yolks so get that bowl out of there and go bring back your other bowl look at that it's back already so you're gonna scoop a, a big about a third of the egg whites into there and then just, you're gonna start folding it in a little bit with your rubble spatula to just get it in there. Doesn't have to be crazy. Cause now you're gonna take the paddle and you're gonna, you're gonna mix it. You're gonna stir it on slow. You don't wanna go crazy. You still want it to retain a bunch of air and that, those stiff egg whites. The reason we got those egg whites so stiff is so they hold on to the air, right? So you're gonna uh, paddle the egg whites in there and then you're gonna add some more egg whites. And you're gonna paddle those egg whites. Okay, but not too long, right? You need the, you need the air in there, right? So you're gonna paddle some more egg whites in there. Egg white, egg white, egg white. All right, and then uh, that should about do it. Uh, maybe we got a little bit more here. How much egg whites do we have? God damn it. Listen, I I'm not going to lie to you. This recipe takes a little while to make. All right, but now, look, okay, we're done. See? All right, so are we done? Yeah, okay, we're done enough. So... Get as, much of, get as much of the batter back in the bowl as you can. Slide that what? shit on over to the counter. <clears throat> Grab yourself a little bit of plastic wrap. Wrap that bad boy up. Then throw that <clears throat> in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. While that batter is cooling, probably a pretty good time to preheat your oven. So, you know, maybe give it about 15 minutes so... While it's cooling for a few minutes, go ahead and turn that oven on. 350. Grab a couple of uh, baking trays. I, I use half sheet trays. Line them up with some parchment paper. 
and start laying all your batter out. Now your batter should be like kind of a medium consistency uh, and you're going to want to put half on each tray and spread it out in a circle. Uh, I always do my best to try to give it a crust or whatever, but the truth is it doesn't really matter when it, it's going to flatten out while it's cooking. So the crust, don't crust. Uh, what, I, what I did here was I kind of did the drop, the drop, the drop it, trying to make it like a circle, but I still had to spread it out anyway, so it, it didn't really do that for me. So, but uh, it don't matter. And they're going to be a little rectangular, too, unless you got two round trays that you can use. I only have, I mean, I do have a round tray, but I don't have two decent sized ones. Well, maybe, I don't know. Maybe next time. I'll see what I can do. But this time, what's going to happen is they're going to be round now. You're going to stick them in an the oven. They're going to come out somewhat rectangular because they kind of spread out a little bit and take the shape of the pan. But it don't matter because they're come out. good. Anyway. Long story short, too late, pop them in the oven, and set the timer for 15 minutes. Now after 15 minutes goes by, yank them bad boys out, wrap them up, throw them in the freezer. You, you want to let them sit for at least probably about, uh, I, I, I don't do it for less than 30 minutes, right? I, I don't even know if that's really as long as you're supposed to do it for, but I give it about 30 minutes before I use them. Go ahead and preheat your oven now to, uh, I don't know, like 525 and stick a pizza stone in there. You'll see I put it to 530. I just didn't feel like backing off one after I overshot it, but go ahead and preheat that bad boy and get your pizza ready. I'm gonna lay this pizza out on a piece of parchment paper here. And just slide the whole thing onto the pizza stone in the oven. Now I used a round pan here, which was a mistake. I uh, maybe actually it might have worked better if I had used it upside down or whatever. But I had difficulty sliding it off the tray. I should have just used the cutting board that I'm going to use to pull it out of the oven with. I'm gonna grab some ricotta cheese, and I'm gonna spread the ricotta around. I'm not uh, the original recipe called uh, for alfredo sauce the guy actually showed you how to make alfredo sauce uh shout out to chris cook in nashville showed you how to make alfredo sauce uh that's not how i make alfredo sauce but uh either way i don't really like alfredo sauce on my pizza so i'd rather just have a traditional white pizza which is it's got nothing to do with being white it's just what the kind of pizza is called you know what i mean so, uh, what the f*** was I saying? Oh, yeah, so, go ahead and uh, spread ricotta around the entire, uh, surface of the, of the crust. The, the whole purpose of it, of using, like, tomato sauce or some of this cheese here like this, or maybe using the Alfredo sauce, is to sort of add something with a little bit of moisture to it. Right, so you don't need Alfredo sauce the, or tomato sauce. The ricotta cheese has enough moisture in it that it's going to prevent the pizza from being too dry. So it, it works better if you have like a uh, if you can mix it up a little bit more than I did, but it's it's still it works fine. Now everybody's favorite part of the pizza, the mozzarella. So uh, it's pretty straightforward. What you do, just put it on there. I use whole milk mozzarella. Uh, you you don't have to. You can use whatever kind you want. I just like to prefer that one. But uh, and some people use fresh mozzarella, but it doesn't really melt as good. So I, I use the shredded here, and I put it on a pizza. Groundbreaking, I know. I do also uh, try not to let it get too close to the edge because without that puffy crust, like on a real pizza. The cheese will just kind of melt and just run off. So you don't want that to happen either. For my final topping, I will be topping this bad boy with pepperoni. And I like to pack my pizza full of pepperoni. But you can use less or more if you want. Although if you, if you put too much more, it's going to kind of be like overlapping each other. And it's not going to get as crispy. I like my crisp. I like... Fudge. I like crispy pepperoni, man. So, uh... 
there's that. Go ahead and slide that honky ass pizza into the oven like you're sliding into a bitch's DMs. Set the timer for 10 minutes. You're gonna see me set it for 12 minutes? Set it for 10 minutes and check on it. And add more time if you have to. Set your cutting board up. Pull your pizza out. Slide it on there. Now you see why I told you to put it in for 10 minutes instead of 12? It's a little it's a little crispy on the edge there. I got kind of lucky though, it don't really taste burnt. Cut it. I chose six slices. You could do eight slices. It's not exactly round, but uh I don't give a what? fuck. It came out pretty good anyways. Hey, thanks for sticking around. I appreciate you, brothers and sisters. Uh do me a solid if you could. Uh comment on the video below. Uh give a like. Give a subscribe, ring the Fireity. bell for the notifications, uh, check out the other videos, whatever they pop up, and uh, finally, don't be a goddamn communist. Thanks.